So West Florida on the road in the white uniforms. Ferris State here at home. Winner goes to the national title game. Ferris State won it all last year. West Florida won it in 2019. And one of them gets to go back this year. And off we go from Big Rapids. Dion Small in the return, sheds one. Good return outside the 30, and that's where this Bulldogs offense takes over on the first drive of the game. That's what you want to see out of your special team, especially a lot of teams don't field kickoffs. When you get a good return like that, get that offense some decent field position and some momentum. Malik Mitchell, the starting quarterback, he's missed a lot of the season with injury. They held him out a little bit longer, but now they feel in the playoffs he's back at 100%. He's a gunslinger. He's overcame some injuries. He's a good runner. Fair State is is very masterful at running this triple out, triple option offense out of the out of a spread look. Mitchell was wanting to throw, then took off running, and he got spun down by Will Breland, the All Conference linebacker. Will Breland, he read that quarterback design run right from the snap he wasn't fooled at all he's the bell cow he gets people are lined up he can blitz and he makes tackles in space but that was a design quarterback run but one of the things fair state's trying to do is get speed in space and then look for short quick passes and they change this offense a little bit with mitchell a guy who can throw it a bit more they still are that triple offense triple option offense right but they're not afraid to go through the air a little bit not at all and now Taylor, the running back, off the edge, turns the corner, got a nice block from one of his wide receivers all the way down across the 35. When you see a play hit that quick, it's called the wide zone, and, and the running back just, Taylor takes off running as soon as the ball is snapped and it times up. But it's really a power read look because you get a backside pull and the quarterback can also keep the ball right behind the pulling line. So makes this third down a lot more manageable here for Mitchell and company trying to avoid a three and out. Mitchell to the air on third down, faces some heat, rolls out, now uses the legs, has enough for the first down before he goes pummeling into one of his own guys and it moves the sticks for Ferris State. That's called making something out of nothing. It was good coverage down the field by West Florida and you'll see the athleticism of Mitchell being able to get the first down and runs into his own player, but gets some great blocking, though, too. West Florida's going to have to keep the ball inside and in front of his defensive ends. Big Sweat and Cox are going to have to get up the field and, and keep, keep contained. Yeah, that's a really big defensive line. Now Carson Gulker, the freshman quarterback, you'll see him. He doesn't do a lot of throwing. He's mainly a running guy, and you can see why picking up 10 on his first run. Carson Coker, 800 yard rushes, rush yards on the season. That play there was just a jet sweep with a quarterback read with the option to keep it up the middle. So you're going to see a lot of that kind of misdirection when he's in the game. Now Golker again keeps it on first down. And this time he's shut down after just a two yard gain before he gets slammed to the ground by Key Wetzel. Couple impact players that we're keeping an eye on on this side of the football and C.J. Jefferson without Tyrese Hunt Thompson, the leading wide receiver, he's going to have to do a lot today. Yeah, C.J. is their guy, though. He And he also does it in the run game, too. So you'll see him line up in the slot, go in motion and run some jet sweeps right there. So he's definitely an impact player. Then Puda, big Puda Walker's a guy, too, on that front line for West Florida. Wetzel makes back-to-back -back tackles here for West Florida. Yeah, Puda Walker, 315-pound sophomore, first-team all-conference guy at that nose tackle spot. Forces you to have to run outside. They don't want, want people to run it up the middle. Third down. Golker keeps, lowers the shoulder, and he's got a first down across the 30. That's a tough play to stop, too, because... Fair State makes you defend the entire field. When you get Walker, I mean, when you get Jefferson going in motion like that, those those linebackers have to honor that play fake, and it gives the lineman just enough time to get second level to make those blocks. First time Jefferson gets a touch. You mentioned a little bit ago, they'll get him involved in the run. Can't shake away, and he got bottled up on that far side. Willie Jordan and Key Wetzel combined to make the stop. 
That was a good, good job playing with their hands on the perimeter, the back seven of West Florida. Talking about Jordan, number three, playing that outside linebacker. If, if you really look at their front, they play a three four-ish type defense. They have 3-3-5 three, three, personnel, body type, but they really execute a 3-4 scheme. They want athletes in space. Swing it out right away. Jefferson again, hopping away from one, and he gets tackled from behind down to the 26, and it brings up third down. But again, that's kind of what this Ferris State offense wants to do, right? You get Jefferson involved in the run. Very next play, you get him in the pass game. Definitely. Then you keep him honest with Galker at the quarterback run position. Saw Mitchell with the ability to drop back and scramble. You see Jefferson Ooh. takes in it takes it in the tent there. Yeah. So they're without Tyrese Hunt Thompson and now CJ Jefferson in the tent as well. Top two wide receivers out for Ferris State and Golker on a third down gets right near the sticks. And they say move him first down. I mean, Gawker is 6'3", 220 pounds. I mean, this, this isn't no little, little guy. You see, Coach Tony Anise, he likes 10th season at Fair State, really done a fine job building this program to where it is to a national power, national championship last year, and trying to get back. Look at that record, 113-17 in 10 seasons. That's unheard of. Fourth straight trip to the semifinals, trying to get back to the title game for a second straight year. Galker on first down. Nice patient run from the freshman quarterback, and he picks up eight more. That's the perfect call for it versus that three-man front, too. Watch him get linemen pulling from the backside. You see big Adam Sealer. That's their guy, number 70. But getting down... Getting down the field, though, second level with a big, strong quarterback, that's definitely hard to stop. Second and two. Golker again has the first down and spins across the five. This has turned into the Carson Golker drive after Malik Mitchell started it. It's been all Golker and all running. One of the things that Fair State is saying to West Florida is let's get in the phone booth and find out who's the tougher person because you know as cold as it is outside it's tough to tackle in these conditions when you really find out the toughness of your team but you also want to get some momentum started there as you see the offensive staff signaling the formation and the play in and I'm expecting 12 Carson Gawker to probably keep that ball and ground and pound again. He's got 25 rushing touchdowns this season. Searching for number 26, gets a push, and he scores! An opening drive touchdown for Ferris State, and number one is on the board. About time we tip our cap to this offensive line. They are blocking and winning at the point of attack. But look at the second and third effort of Carson Gawker, the freshman, 6'3", 220 pounds, just falling into the end zone, taking the, the bringing the punch to the party, as we say, when, when guys are just playing downhill and being physical. And that's one of the things Coach Amin said, they have to be very physical, and that's a great first drive. Took about six and a half minutes, rather seven and a half minutes off the clock. And they're going to take an extra look at it, I think. We'll see if. Oh, whoa, he might be a little short. Might huh? be short. I mean, it looks like he got to the one yard line and got turned around. Some of his buddies now where they were in the end zone. You see Knight and Seven and those guys leading the way, but it's Florida signaling. No. This is the angle that they're taking the closest look at right now, and that tells me he's short, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it doesn't look like from that angle the ball across the plane. 
we get a good look at the replay too because the, the officials are right next to us. <laughs> All the technology those guys are on top of. Right there. After further review, the rolling on the field stands. Touchdown. Wow. Rolling on the field stands, so a 13-play drive that took six and a half off the clock for Ferris State to open up the scoring. Well, it had to be conclusive to be over, overturned. And it was hard to tell from that angle if the ball was in the left arm and it broke the plane with the forward progress, but they took a look at it and made the call, and here we are. Eddie Jewett goes through on the kick to make it 7-0. How about the start from Ferris State here at home? Number one takes a 7-0 lead here in the national semifinals. Coldest game they played in by a lot. 33 degrees at kickoff today in Michigan. And you know what? I, as a former player, I would like to say weather doesn't matter, but it, it really does, you know? And, and, and I say it not because they're from Florida. It's just a lot of guys don't want to tackle in the cold. I mean, tackling and blocking and also catching the football. So to come out running the football for Fair State, I thought was a good strategy. That way they didn't have to worry about any drop balls. This is Daquan Brown Bailey on the return for West Florida. Reverses all the way across, tries to hurdle a guy and gets shoved out near the 23. And that's where the drive starts for this West Florida offense. It was one of the best offenses in the nation at the Division II. Here's a look today. 32 degrees, wind not bad. It feels like it's 24 out there. So certainly not your typical Pensacola, Florida afternoon. Oh, in that Pensacola area, but it's really nice down there. I actually like it, the yeah. weather, the panhandle, the whole deal. And this young man here, that's the guy, Pee Wee Jarrett. Can do it by land and by air. We'll show you his numbers here in a second. He hands it off. And Shamari Mason, who's a first-team all-conference running back, gets a few yards on the first play of the day. And there is Pee Wee Jarrett. First year with West Florida operating this offense. He was an All-American at the junior college level last year, and it has translated well to the Division II level. It really has. I mean, he can score it quick. You know, he's a 50% passer, but I really like the 32 touchdowns to eight interceptions. 119 carries. This man's putting up 727 yards so far and eight touchdowns on the ground. See him throw for the first time. Takes a shot down the sideline, and it's pulled in for a catch. Nate Howard deep downfield, and a massive play for this West Florida offense. Well, J Jared had plenty of time to throw the ball, but look at Howard with the hand-eye coordination and just being able to go catch the ball at the highest point. That's a very... Tough catch over Sidney McLeod, number one, the defensive back there on, on the coverage. 35 yards from Jarrett to Howard on the first pass attempt of the day. She gets that left foot in bounds for sure. Man. And maintain control. He knew it right away, too. The rolling on the field is a completed catch. The previous play is under further review. Well, they're going to take one more look at it to see if he maintained possession the whole time. He definitely got that left foot down that we're talking about, but Marcus, did he hold on to the football and have complete control of it the whole time? High points to football, left foot. Come, does he have possession right there? I say yes. I say yes, too. I mean, he never bobbled it, even though McLeod had his hand in the catching window receiving I, I think that's called possession and getting a foot down. And he got up like he knew he caught that football. I don't even think that's a play stands. I think you can confirm that one. And that was tough, too, because the defender got a hand in there, Sidney McLeod. Mm -hmm. Definitely yeah. inbounds with the one leg. I mean, we got guys all over the place giving us these great angles to really see. But look at that. Left foot, toe tapping, concentrating. McLeod draped all over him. After further review, the previous play is confirmed. First down. Well, there we go. How about that? We got one right after missing the review on the first try, Marcus. <laughs> we're in the win column. And that's why we're up here and not down there. <laughs> 
see Nate Howard those he's only caught coming to this game 11 balls for 198 yards and two touchdowns and in the playoffs these are the type of players that are going to have to make plays to be unsung heroes as everyone else focus, focuses on Darden, Darden and some of the other guys Mason again with the acceleration right at the gap coming off a game where he recorded his season low just 15 yards rushing with Shamari Mason, but they didn't really need him to very much after a 31 yard or 31 point win. There is a late flag. We'll have to check in on that. Mason's a thousand yard rusher coming into the game, though, and his yards per carry, he and Hargrove is north After of the play, yards. personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 24. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. So they had bottled up Mason well, but Sintel Williams gets the 15 yard personal foul penalty. And this moves West Florida in the red zone already down to the 18. Gotta maintain your poise, especially after a big play right now. West Florida has answered the bell offensively and their drive making a good drive of their own right back in scoring position. West Florida's offense can keep pace with anybody. That's never been a question. And Mason gets spun down at the 12. He picks up six yards on first down. Well, the impact players on this side of the football offensively for West Florida. Talked a lot about David Durden, right? He's an NFL caliber wide receiver, but their number two guy, Cade Leggett, pretty good himself. Yeah, 36 catches on the year. You have to locate him because he likes to catch those intermediate routes and get, get open. On the flip side, Vincent Cooley, young man out of Detroit, Michigan, eight tackles a week ago, and an interception and a tackle for loss. So I think both sides, both secondaries have their hands full with these weapons on the outside. The running back lined up next to Jared is Ravion Hargrove, the first time we've seen him today. He gets the football. Stutter steps, makes a guy miss, and he's right down near the marker needing four yards. And they say move the sticks, first down, and it's first and goal now for the Argos. And Caden Leggett is also a good blocker too. Right there you saw the wide zone play. And the only way that's going to work is if those outside receivers block the nickel pack and the corners and keep those secondary guys out of the box. But that was a good block there by the wide receivers. First and goal now for West Florida. Hargrove got slipped. And a nice play by Sintel Williams, who came storming in to make the play second and goal. And you see, when the field gets shorter, what it does is brings those defensive backs closer to the ball. There is no field behind you. Watch the jump cut there. Now, talk about weather having an impact, yeah. not necessarily the temperature, but the conditions on the field. But that snow not being there probably made it a little more slick out there because Hargrove made a great jump cut, but he, he planted off that inside foot and fell down. But it's good run support by Williams. Now the snow is gone, but it was there this morning. Probably creates a little bit of some wet conditions. Second and goal from the eight, and before that, we get a West Florida timeout. Just ahead of their second and goal play with five to go in the first quarter. Timeout, West Florida, first of the half. Well, we're going to take it with them. West Florida trying to answer back and tie this game up at seven here on a cold afternoon in Michigan. Yeah, each of the last two national champions, this time around they're playing in the semifinals where the winner gets to play for another national championship next week against the winner of Shepard and Colorado School of Mines. That one coming up right after we finish here on ESPN+. Plus. Yeah, this is West Florida's third trip to the semifinals. Coach told us three with the third different quarterback. Three in, different quarterbacks. In only six years of the program. It's a brand <laughs> new program. Jared on second and goal. Hands off. Hargrove bouncing off one, and he got stacked up immediately after. The push led by Justin Payout, the safety. And we've got third and goal coming up here for West Florida. That's tough to run that power scheme right there if you don't block the linebackers, but they did a fine job with gap integrity. You see Major Deadman, the strong safety coming up 18. Mr. Cleanup man getting up, flexing his muscles as well. It's a good stop. West Florida has struggled on third down at points this season. Been really good in the red zone, though. Trying to push it in and tie this game up. 
Jarek to the corner of the end zone, and it's incomplete. Looking for Kobe Quill in fourth down. Coverage by Vincent Cooley, who you talked about at the start of this drive, a guy that they love one-on-one -on -one in coverage. Yeah, last season was the first team all-conference guy. Watch the coverage here. Press coverage. There's only two, two or three routes you can expect on the goal line area, and that was that back shoulder fade that he defended extremely well. And that's and that could be a difference in the game. It's red zone offense scoring touchdowns versus field goals. As you see, Ferris got a touchdown, but they only give up 14 and a half per game, and that's part of the reason why they get stops down in this area. A 24-yard field goal attempt now for Griffin Sarah, and he puts it through. So West Florida doesn't get the seven to tie it up. They have to settle for three. And here in the first quarter, Media West timeout. Florida down four. Couldn't get the touchdown here. Good coverage to force the field goal. Had to review that call. It's called a touchdown on the field. And the replay officials, hey, they said, couldn't tell if it's the ball crossed the plane. If it didn't cross the plane, but nevertheless, they called it a touchdown. That young man, I'm expecting to see him back in the game. He, I think he gave that offense a different type of identity and punch whenever it comes down to just running that football. Yeah, the replay official just came into our booth during the commercial and said it probably looked short to a lot of people, but we called it a touchdown in the field. We couldn't confirm that it wasn't, so he stuck with what the call was, and that was the touchdown. The return from the 10, and a really good return at that from Small before he got upended across the 35 and back-to-back -back starting field position in a great spot for Ferris State's offense. It's another good return. Special teams starting that ball beyond the 30, 35-yard line. But watch how Small sets up his blocks. And that's what a good kick returner does. They start one way, gets all the defenders running in that direction. When you cut back, it really sets up some good angle blocks for your guys on the return team. Well, here you go, Marcus. It's not Golker in there right now. They go back to Malik Mitchell, the starter. You'll see both plenty throughout the day. Here's the handoff to Jefferson on the end around. Nice moves from C.J. Jefferson, escaping a few tackles for five yards. And Keon Boyce in the safety makes the tackle. Well, we've seen Mitchell, we've seen Gawker, but they can go with the three-headed quarterback sharing the huddle there with Evan Cummings. Cummings in there at 70 yards per game. Now Marcus Taylor ran into his own guy, but got a little bit of a second pull, dragging a defender down with him to the 45, where he got 14 yards and a first down. There is a flag at the end. Yeah, we had some extra curricular hand fighting going on towards the end of that play on the sideline. That's a good run there by Taylor. They're using him on that outside zone play, that stretch look. Penalties could also play a factor in it, too in this game, not just the weather and things like that. But. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number five. 15-yard penalty from the end of the play, automatic first down. That's a really good point, Marcus, that you made before that. These are the two most penalized teams in their respective conferences. Penalties could make uh, could play a huge part in this game. Yeah, you see Anthony Johnson there. He got a little extra here. He, delivered about three hands to the face and they called the last one. They'll let you play through it, but yeah, penalties can definitely play a major role. Taylor, after the 14-yard run, turns the corner, explodes down the sideline, ducks away from a tackler, and he scores! Thirty yards to the house from Marcus Taylor, and Ferris State is now up two possessions. And, and that's what the good teams do is they make you pay for your mistakes. After that 15-yard penalty by Johnson, they come back with this outside zone. But watch Breedland, 35. When you jump inside, right there's a linebacker. Good block there by big Adam Seiler. And, and everyone else gets their block down the field. Taylor does the rest. But that's what you do is you come right back, go tempo, hit a big play while the defense is still trying to figure out emotionally where they are after a big penalty. 
The ruling on the field is a touchdown by the offense. The previous play is under further review. We're going to take a look at it. I'm thinking maybe to see if he stepped on the sideline somewhere. Keep an eye on that left foot, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's That's an easy completely. touchdown. Well, the yeah, knee come yeah. down. That's going to be the question. Yeah, he looked like he was suspended in the air. Got a good view right here. Knees down there. Knees down right there if you freeze it. It's not the right at the goal line, but I, well. That knee looks like it's down about the one and a half yard line. Where's the ball at when the knee gets down? Right there. Right there. Knee goes down. That ball is, again, I think you're going to run into what we saw in the first touchdown play, right? I don't think there's enough to overturn that. That's going to be an interesting call, though, too. Ball looked like it was coming out on the way down, too, but that was a great run, though. Good effort making guys miss in space. Marcus Taylor, young man out of Orlando, Florida. I'm sure he knows some of these guys on the West Florida team. After further review, the runner was short of the goal line. The ball will be placed at the one half yard line. First and goal, Ferris State. Well, take that back. Down at the one half yard line. Call reversed. Ferris State doesn't have the touchdown yet, but they've got first and goal inside the one. And the numbers on the season for Marcus Taylor, a guy who gets involved not just in the run game, but we'll see him plenty in the pass game too. He's a good pass protector, too. He, he's a very complete running back. And Coach Anise told us that he, he gets the majority of the carries because he's the most experienced guy, too, and, and he just does so much. But you'll see the 5'8", five, 5'9", five, type running back, in, scat back in this offense. Golker's back in, and the freshman quarterback punches it in for the second time today. The ground and pound, single wing which has been called the Wildcat, re renamed, and you'll see Gawker. He's just lining up, running forward. You see the big guys on the left side, Giovanni Aghese and Hamad. I mean, those guys are just road dogging and root hogging is what we used to call it back in the day in the Big Ten where you just fall forward and rough people up in between the one and two yard line. You needed less than a minute to score on this touchdown drive. Second rushing touchdown for the quarterback, Carson Gulker. And Ferris State is all over West Florida now in the first quarter, up 14-3. One of the things that Ferris State wanted to do coming into this game is be more physical. And I think they've been physical at the point of attack as we go back to Taylor's run. So you see Breland jumped inside. You've got to work across the face of that line, but you also have to tackle in space. If you're Givens and those guys on the back end, as you see Tim Givens right there, you have to get make some contact with the body and wrap up as Sweat turned and tried to make a play down there. He made a touchdown saving tackle by running to the football, but that was a great individual effort there by Taylor. It was a 30-yard run. For Taylor to set up that one-yard touchdown run and on the road right now, Pete Shinnick's team has to be a little bit worried with this first quarter start and two of the best at the Division II level. These guys have developed powerhouses here in D2. Yeah, look at their D2 playoff win, 16-12. and 12. One national title apiece. You see Coach Anise, the winningest active D2 coach with a minimum of four seasons. Like you said, West Florida was still relatively new. I mean, but, but the strides they've made and all the noise they've been able to create, it's phenomenal. Quan Brown Bailey tripped up right near the 20 to start this drive for West Florida. Yeah, both head coaches have won a national championship at their schools. In fact, they've won back-to-back -back because there was no 2020 season. West Florida won it all in 2019. Coach Anise and... Ferris State won the national title last year and off to a really good start trying to go back to the championship game for a second consecutive year. And, and Coach Anis told us that this team has exceeded his expectations as far as where they are, being that they lost six sixth-year offensive linemen, okay? 
You hear that right? Six <laughs> sixth-year guys. He knew his defense was going to be good, but he also had a lot of confidence in that offense. Got some confidence in his defense, too. Oladipo off the edge with the sack, and it sets up second and long for West Florida. And you'll see him coming from the right of your screen. He makes that inside move. Beats the big fella, Stipe. And runs down. You know, Caleb Murphy gets a lot of attention, but schematically, they all four collectively play together and stay in their pass rush lane. So Murphy makes a lot of plays, but Oladipo, Bradford, Jones, those guys make plays too. And it's and it's part scheme and it's part individual effort. You didn't give that secondary some credit. Oladipo's eighth sack this season. Pales in comparison quite a bit to the 24 and a half that Caleb Murphy has. Delay game, offense number seven. Five yard penalty, second down. What was already a second and long becomes second and even longer after the delay of game here for West Florida. 21 yards to go after the sack and the five yard penalty on the delay of game and West Florida has really backed up inside their own 10. Empty backfield for Jarrett here on second and long. Zips it to the sideline, but it got batted down, and it was Oladipo again. The sack followed by the pass breakup, third and 21. Defensive linemen are coached to get their hands up if the ball, if they expect the ball to be thrown quickly and you can't make the sack. But you'll see Oladipo using that rip, and he's getting that arm up well before the ball was thrown. Jarrett, quarterback, 6'3", so he can see over the line. Well, West Florida likes to get the ball out quick. Oladipo understood that and batted it down. Need 21 yards on third down. Jarrett rolling right, flag comes in. It's well short, and I think that flag is against the offense either way on a holding. It's tough once the quarterback starts to scramble and those bodies on the defensive line start moving around. Holding, offense, number 67. The penalties decline, fourth out. It's Naimanta DeCour. Gets called for the holding, they decline it, and a three and out by this Ferris State defense. That was just a tough series offensively, starting with the sack. Give Ferris State a ton of credit, but right now West Florida just can't get into their rhythm. They're going to have to block better up front. They did have the one pass the last series to Nate Howard. That was a big catch and kind of got stifled down in the red zone, so they're going to have to find a way to get some explosive plays. Oh, nearly blocked the punt. Got it away in the fair catch called for at the 45. There's also a penalty marker back near the line of scrimmage. Maybe we'll get the call. Illegal formation, more than four players in the backfield. Offense. That five-yard penalty will be assessed at the end of the kick. First down, Ferris. Well, as if Ferris State needed any help offensively, they start at midfield after the illegal formation on the punt from West Florida. Yeah, you got five guys in the backfield, punter, two up backs, and then you got two more guys just have to get lined up right. But it's that used to be a penalty that could be declined or accepted, and now they add it to the return. So drive starts at midfield. Here's the option to Taylor. Had the big 30-yard run to set up the touchdown last drive, and he scampers up near the marker again. Eight yards on a productive first down before Shannon Showers tracks him down. You see the explosiveness of Marcus Taylor with the ability to attack the perimeter. He lined up extremely wide. Malik Mitchell in the completion. 
complete football player, meaning he can pitch it, throw it, run it. He understands where to go with the football. That's a good call there. Mitchell keeps it, has enough for the first down before he gets twisted down to 35 for six yards. See, this offense is designed to make defenses honor them left, right, middle. That means you have to defend the entire field. So when you get that jet sweep action, if you're not careful, it can get around the end. If you, but if you watch that too long, quarterback will keep it. We haven't seen Ferris State have to go to the air almost at all in the first three drives. They have been so good on the ground. Continue to keep it there with Taylor. Nice cut up the middle. Now reversing to the sideline. Has the edge. And he gets ushered out near the 10 by Key Wetzel. It's a tough play to stop there. Is that that power read. So, you, so you'll see the left side of the line pulling. And Taylor understands exactly where the run lane is going to be with the inside out move. Deion Boysen running it down. But Taylor, though, he is getting to the second and third level with explosive speed and cuts. And he's picking up some excellent blocking up front. Well, now Golker's in at quarterback and Zamir Knighton giving Taylor a break. Volker holds on to it and runs into a handful of defenders for West Florida. Breland and Cody Lowe, the first two there to make the play on the final play of the first quarter. And a great one at that for number one Ferris State trying to go back to the national title game up 14 to three on West Florida in the first 15 minutes. Yeah, pound city, baby. Sac State had the basketball numbers, huh? Got put out of here. 63 to 60. Really couldn't ask for much better of a first quarter from Ferris State. Number one in the defending national champions up 14 to three after one quarter of play, trying to get back to the national title game next week here in the semifinals. 
and you don't need to take much look past line number one to know the story of the first quarter, 152 rushing yards for Ferris State. Definitely, you see the time of possession, 156 total yards, 10 first downs. First downs lead to touchdowns. Three for three on third down as well. They've been very manageable. Malik Mitchell was able to scramble for that first one. And West Florida's got to figure something out. I mean, they're going to have to get some stops on defense, especially. And then, as you see, Taylor, this guy here, Marcus Taylor, he's been the guy carrying that load for that rushing yard advantage. And they've done it inside, outside. You see the fancy footwork there. But the defense has played well, too. But when this young man gets hot and gets going, that complements Carson Golker as well, as he's been a major part of that rushing game. Yeah, Carson Golker, the redshirt freshman quarterback, has scored both touchdowns on the ground. But Marcus Taylor, five carries, 83 yards, about 16 and a half yards a carry. That'll get the job done most days. Oh, that'll get it. Uh, that'll get it done at any level, as you see right there, five for 83, as you mentioned, 16 and a half per. Another key stat, too, is West Florida three penalties for 25 yards versus their State's one for 15, and that was in their first defensive series. This offense is driving again for Ferris State to start the second quarter. Got a chance to push this out to a 21-3 lead. Golker holds on to it, follows a block, and he gets wrapped up at the ankles. Time. That's a good stop there. And you didn't see any linemen pulling on that quarterback counter, so I think West Florida was able to play straight up and not have to worry about any misdirection or linemen pulling and getting outnumbered at the point of attack. That's a good stop there. And so Golker goes out, Mitchell comes back in. The two quarterback system, they use both of them plenty and they interchange them throughout drives. Mitchell rolling right side, zips it on the run to the end zone. He's got Taylor, but it's incomplete. Well, you see the arm strength of Mitchell, and Taylor was able to slip out from his running back position and go up top. You see if he was able to get that left foot in. Oh, yeah, it's clearly out. He stepped into red. Great individual effort. Mitchell held on to it just a little bit too long. That's good defense on the back end. See, Anthony Johnson with great coverage. It's a 28-yard field goal attempt coming up now for Eddie Jewett. Puts it through, and it's a two-touchdown lead for Ferris State. They don't get the six on this drive, still get three, and it's 17-3, all Bulldogs. First drive, okay, scoring drive, okay.
Early second quarter here from Big Rapids, Michigan, and West Florida's offense early in the game was moving things well. They got a nice return here, and then the offense got set up on the only pass completion of the first quarter to Nate Howard for 35 yards, but the drive stalled out, had to settle for three. Yeah, I think right there, if they were, they had to settle for a field goal, which was the difference, and Fair State only giving up 14 and a half points when the field got short. They weren't able to run the football West Florida, so... You know, they're very explosive. I mean, they can score in bunches. They don't need a lot of time, but they don't want this one to get too far away from them, too out of reach, because Fair State right now is playing playing extremely well on offense and they're ball controlling, too, with that run game. Well, the good news for Pete Shinnick in this West Florida group is if there's an offense built to be able to come down from a couple touchdowns, it's probably them. Number two offense in the country, averaging more than 43 points a game. Quick strike ability, too. And even with that deep ball that Howard was just saw you, I mean, they can get it done. I think Fair State, they switched up their scheme a little bit. They didn't necessarily load the box, and they weren't asking the guys to play one-on-one. -on -one, so they kept more guys back in coverage and just played with four up front, and they've been dominating. Three straight scoring drives for Ferris State to put them up 17-3. Mitchell Middleton kicks it away. This is Zach Offord from the 10 on the return. And Offord had a bit of a second push, but couldn't quite reach the 30, and that's where West Florida, down 14, takes over. The offense looked good on the first two or three plays, the opening, opening drive, Marcus, but since then, not much movement. How can this team get something going offensively? Well, I think they're going to have to go with some quarterback run. I mean, Pee Wee Jared hasn't ran the ball yet quarterback design run I think you average seven and a half yards per play second in the nation you have to keep the defense off balance I mean they don't know if they're just going to run it or pass it but Jared I think has to get involved in the run game that'll bring some more guys up from the secondary to help stop the quarterback run and then you get those one-on-one -on -one matchups and then you can start throwing the ball back down the field Jarrett to throw. He's only completed one today and won't make that number two as it slips right through the hands of C.J. Wilson, his running back. It's one of three guys that we've already seen for West Florida in the backfield, and they use these guys a lot. Yeah, that was a very catchable ball. And that's the, I think that's another thing when you talk about weather being a factor is how hard is that football? Is it you know, hard to catch? The blocking, tackling, and catching the football is definitely hard to do in inclement weather when it's cold out there. But I, I thought Jarrett put that one right on the money. 32 degrees at kickoff. Feels like 24 with the wind chill. Not your typical day in Pensacola, Florida. They go back to the ground game and a great effort to pick up the first down. C.J. Wilson goes for 22 yards to move the sticks in the first time we've seen West Florida really move the ball in a while. Yeah, and that's, and that's what he does, too. Nice job by the offensive line. When he gets north and south, gets that foot in the ground. Coming into the game, 78 carries, 500 yards, and, you know, 12 touchdowns on the ground. So he's a very capable runner. But if they can get that going at north and south, then they'll be able to score. It's another touch here and a patient run to the 45. Yeah, he's third on the team in terms of carries and yards, but he actually leads the team in touchdowns with 12 rushing touchdowns, Marcus. They really like the punch that he brings, especially on short yardage and goal line situations. Yeah, he averages six and a half per carry coming into the game. And, and they use all three, Hargrove, Mason. Their, their yards per carry is closer to eight, eight and a half per. But Wilson is a guy that will punch it in, and none of those guys get tired. So they use a pretty good rotation by committee. Wilson a little bit bigger of the three running backs, and he got upended at the 41, a yard shy of the marker by Sintel Williams. He said Williams' name a lot. He's made a few plays defensively in that secondary. Yeah, Williams came up nicely. He's the one that had that penalty earlier, but ever since then, he's been in the mix and making some plays. As you see, kept his eyes on Wilson as he tried to hurdle him. Made a nice tackle on third on second down. Surprised to see Wilson go out on a third and one, knowing that he's the short yardage guy? <laughs> a little bit, but he's been carrying that load, though. Shamari Mason back in there, and the penetration from the defensive line 
Ferris State makes the stop, led by who else but Caleb Murphy, the National Defensive Lineman of the Year. Guy like Murphy, though, he's a you know, he's a freak athlete, and you'll see him getting up the field. He's very productive and disruptive. Had some help from Nick Thomas there coming from that linebacker position. You know, after that first Grand Valley State loss, Fair State, you know, had some soul searching to do, and they moved some pieces around. Connor Near moved from Mike linebacker to Will, and Deadman moved around too from his nickelback linebacker position, but. There's a lot of other names out there, but 12, well, Murphy Ferris is State, the guy. They're first of the half. So right before the punt, Ferris State calls the timeout. I'm a little surprised. I know they lost a couple yards there, so that probably doesn't help the cause, but where you're at on the field right now, approaching the 40-yard line, fourth and three, down two touchdowns, I thought we might see the offense stay out there for the last four. You know, I was thinking the same thing, Noah, and – to take it a step further, I was anticipating play action pass on third and short because that's called a waste down, meaning if it's incomplete, you're still right at fourth and one, so you get the two for one opportunity. But when you lose yards now, it puts you in a different kind of predicament and gives you a defense advantage. But the way Fair State loaded the box on that on that third down, I think that was an opportunity to play action, sell the run, and take a shot just to try to get back in the game. Looks like the punt unit is sticking out there. It is V-Week at ESPN where we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research. This is game-changing research that helps save lives. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly toward cancer research. Noah Reed, Marcus Ray with you here in the Division II National Semifinals. Winner gets to go play for the national title next week against either the Colorado School of Mines or Shepherd. That one kicking off right after we get done about 3.30 on ESPN+. Plus. I mean, it's an all or nothing situation. Win or go home, the semifinal game. Next up is the national title game. West Florida needs to execute and sustain drives if they're going to have a chance to advance. And Steve Dawson punted away. Taylor calling for a fair catch all the way back to the five. So West Florida does able to flip the field down 14. They need to stop defensively. just Ferris State who has the experience in these games. They won the national title last year, but in 2019, West Florida won it all, and five guys back from that 2019 team this year trying to get back to the championship game again. Yeah, you see left tackle Bruce. He's still out there, started 15 games at right tackle. That's three years ago, and he's still on the team. And so you see guys like Laurent, Mason, Oliver, Sweat. I mean, they've, they've been around. They understand. We don't want to leave Givens out at, at the bottom, but They've got guys that were part of that team that won the title, and obviously a lot of rosters change in between the three-year span. 
COVID and people coming and going to see these guys. Coach Shinnick guys right back in it to win it. They're relying on that those those guys for leadership and experience and guys that have been around and understand the stakes. Third national semifinals appearance for West Florida in the last five years, and they've done it with three different quarterbacks as well. It's Ferris State's offense who takes over now, though, up by 14, trying to add on to that. Backed up to their own goal line, though, starting at the five. And the Bulldogs have scored on all three drives today. Touchdown, touchdown, field goal to open up this 17-3 lead. Taylor turning the corner. Nice hesitation, and he gets yanked out by Keon Voison for five yards. When you're backed up offensively, you don't want to make any mistakes, and you want to try to run the football to get some breathing room in the event that you have to punt. Going from there, if you're Tony Denise, head coach, you're thinking, okay, second and manageable, get a first down, and then you can get into your play calling. But the first few plays when you're backed up is to just get out of there. We'll go to the ground again with Taylor making a couple guys miss and finally ripped down by the ankles all the way out to the 24 and he gets the first down. Taylor's a little better than advertised. Watch this jump cut. Watch the jump cut right in the hole right there. And you have missed tackles left and right. That was Willie Jordan that missed. Now Taylor lost the football. It's loose on the deck. And it looked like Ferris State falls on it, but all the way back beyond the line of scrimmage to the 23. That could have been a massive opportunity for West Florida. Well, you'll see here, Taylor's running the football, but this West Florida defense will create turnovers. And that's one way you do is get your eyes on the football, as Boyson did, when you get multiple hats to the ball. Then you get an opportunity to create turnovers, but Taylor's going to have to protect that ball, especially in traffic. Very fortunate to get it back. West Florida's defense scored four touchdowns last week in the 45-14 win over Wingate. And Ferris State, to avoid a delay a game, has to call a timeout. Take it with them. Ferris stayed up by 14, still driving. Ferris State, not just the defending national champions, but how about the perennial powerhouse this program has turned into, Marcus? Eight straight trips to the Division II playoffs, four consecutive years in the semifinals, five of the last six, and a chance to go back to the title game for the second straight year. And they were the, they are the defending national champions. You talk about building a program. That man right there, Tony Anise, done a fine job with his staff. His son, Steve Anise, is the OC. Ryan Hodges is his defensive coordinator, and he doesn't jump to recruiting right away. He no. made a statement earlier in the week telling, hey, recruits, hold on. We're going to get on the road, but we're trying to defend a national title right now. And, and there's some pros and cons that come with that because some of the other guys that don't make it this far get a chance to recruit. They try to get guys to commit so Fair State can't keep it going. <laughs> Isn't that the biggest flex ever? Sorry we can't get on the recruiting trail yet. We're too busy trying to win a national title again. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they are to the semifinals almost every year. Mitchell swings it out to his running back. C.J. Jefferson out of the backfield, picks up 10 and a first down before Showers pulls him down. That's a good play there where you fake the zone read, you get Jefferson getting out there in space right away, and then Mitchell's a magician with that football. You see the fake there, read it, and let it go quick. Back to Taylor on the grounds. Productive play on first down. How about the play discrepancy so far? 22 plays on the ground for Ferris State, just three pass attempts. They don't need balance, and they can do it all on the ground, I guess. Yeah, a lot of coordinators talk balance. When they get down to it, they're going to go with whatever's working. But right now, I think they're keeping West Florida on their heels, and they have them guessing whether it's inside run. Now they're getting out to the perimeter, throwing the bubble, and, and then Taylor is still just has the hot hand. Coach Anise told us earlier this week, we'll pass it a little bit more than we normally do, but we're still going to run the ball a lot. And why not when you got a guy like Marcus Taylor who can pick you at eight yards a carry? 
Another first down. And this offensive line is doing a fine job. You know, 79, the right tackle Bryce George. I mean, when, when you can run that a delayed power play, it gives those linemen a chance to really engage at the point of attack. And West Florida only plays with three down. So it's five versus three, so they're getting a chance to double team and then work up to the second level. Almost 200 on the ground already for Ferris State, not even halfway through the second quarter. Mitchell to throw again, completes it. This is Cam Underwood trying to duck away from one. He does and pulls a whole host of defenders with him. Man, the physicality and the strength from Cam Underwood. Well, did a fine job of looking the football and making the catch. And then from there, you see as West Florida tries to strip that football out. They are a disruptive bunch. Taylor stretching outside with a stiff arm of voice in it. And he's about two yards shy of the marker to bring up third down. How about this again from Underwood? Could have been tackled right here. Instead, look at the extra effort. Second and third effort. I'm impressed he's able to hold on to the football and start getting that many guys reaching and scratching and clawing. Especially with the West Florida offense that your defense that can turn you over. They have forced three or more turnovers all three games of the playoffs before today. Fake it to Jefferson in motion, and Mitchell got smacked at the line of scrimmage. It's fourth down. West Florida really anticipated that. You see big Poodle Walker popping off, too. He's a big fella. He's one of our impact players. Form tackle at the point of attack. It's a big stop there on third down, too. When you run that three man front, you have to have a monster covering up that center, and that's what Poodle Walker is. No offense stays on the field, and in fact, it's Carson Golker, the other quarterback in. He's the running quarterback of the two. He needs two yards. Marcus, I think he's about a half yard shy. I'm not sure he got there. I think so, too. He needed to get to that 40 yard line, and he's. Looks like he's on the 41. That's a big stop there for West Florida. There's nothing to talk about. Referees made a call, but it started the game with 99. Poodle Walker clogging up that middle. This time they ran a pinch stunt, and everybody just created a pile. There was nowhere for Golfer to go. Down two touchdowns, Marcus. You have to be able to use that fourth down stop as a spark now for the offense to get something going, right? You would think so, especially right at midfield, too, so, you, you know, you don't have to go as far or work as hard, but that was a big stop there. If you go down any more than two scores then versus this defending national title team, it's going to be tough. Here's the handoff on the first play. And Shamari Mason doesn't have much going on the first play. This is the best starting field position West Florida has had today by far. I think West Florida here, though, they just, they don't necessarily have to get a ton of yards in first down. They just can't lose yards. Remember a couple of series ago, they had a sack and then the batted pass, and then they won third and 21. So as long as they don't get too far behind the sticks, I, I think their offense still can make something happen. Jarrett stepping up, fires on the run, has a man deep behind everybody, and it's pulled in by David Durden. Touchdown! We've got a game again. You'll see Durden, he stayed alive, and he went vertical. He went Jarrett had enough wherewithal to get, he knew where to go with the football and start to finish Durden was wide open that was a coverage bust on the back end by Fair State and if it's one guy we talked about him at the beginning of the, of the show 17 Durden you have to make you just have to locate him and make someone else beat you but that was a great throw and catch for West Florida to get back in the game Flag before the extra point. 
We've seen a healthy dose of penalty markers today, that's for sure. False start. Offense number 80. Five-yard penalty. Retry. So Nash Nelson called for the false start. Backs him up five yards. But I think that was a good decision after the fourth down stop. And you had just asked, can they have to use, they have to be able to use that as a spark. And I think they did. And that's what a lot of offenses do is when there's a turnover or you get that short field, take a shot. Why not take a shot? It may work. You can flip the field. It loosens up the defense. But I, I think Coach Sinek has been around long enough to know his team needed something and he got it out of there. This was going all Ferris State's way. They had a two-touchdown lead. They had the football. They were driving across midfield. Defense got a stop. David Durden then comes up with a touchdown grab to go up, to go down seven here late in the second. Well, we've got Ferris State in West Florida right now. Ferris State out to a touchdown lead late in the second quarter. Coming up right after this one, Marcus. Colorado School of Mines taking on Shepard and the winner of both of those games get to play for a national title next week. Doesn't like playing for a natty, you know, and this is a true tournament, a true playoff. You would know, wouldn't you? Yeah, National man. champion in 1997 at Michigan, Marcus Ray. 25 years ago, man, there weren't, there weren't any playoffs back then, but I tell you, we would have ran the table and <laughs> dog walked all of it, buddy. <laughs> uh, I know you would have laid a couple punishing hits in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I might be part of the rule for the targeting rule change, but I used to kind of ruffle them up not, a little bit. Not, uh, <laughs> not quite as successful this day and age is what you're telling me? Uh, no, I would have been out of there every half a of game. A few suspensions. <laughs> Just about every game. They said, get this guy out of here. <laughs> All clean hits, but they were they'd, they'd, they'd have been reviewing them. And the football fell off the tee. Reset and do it all again. We were at a point where this game was 17 3, Marcus. Ferris State had the football. They were driving inside midfield, but West Florida got a fourth down stop. They get a touchdown, and just like that, this is a game. Yeah, that's all it takes, too. And if you keep it in, within striking distance, you give yourself a chance. And Deion Small lets that bounce through the end zone, a touchback to start the drive. I think this is a key drive there for Fair State because West Florida has the momentum. You don't want to have a turnover here. Got to probably get back to running the football, run some clock, possibly try to milk all of it and go down and get a score and go up some type of two-score lead. If you don't, then you're going to give West Florida a chance with decent field position and a lot of momentum. And like we said, they have a quick strike offense. They don't need much time. Marcus Taylor lowers the shoulder, got a couple extra yards on his second effort. But the rallying by this West Florida defense makes the stop. It's Will Breeland, the all-conference linebacker who led that swarm of defenders. Yeah, that was a good lead there by Breeland. He's able to get off a block and scrape. A little bit of hurry up coming from this offense of Ferris State. And Taylor follows a block as he gets ushered out near the 30. He's already over 120 yards today. Only a second 100-yard rushing game of the season, Marcus. We're not even at halftime yet. Yeah, and, and he's had a lot of success running in between the tackles right there. That was an outside run play. That time, West Florida was able to get off blocks and, and not a, allow him to find any room on the perimeter. He's been the workhorse of every drive so far for Ferris State. On third down, Mitchell's got to go to the air. Over the middle, has a man, and he stops short. Des Libertis got tackled by Sherrod Oliver in the open field, two yards shy, fourth down. Yeah, I like to call him on the uh, short crossing route, but you're going to have to make plays in space if you want to play in a national championship game. And Oliver did that. Sherrod stayed right in his zone. Read the quarterback, tackled the catch, and gave his defense a big time third down stop. We showed you that graphic a few minutes ago. Six guys from the 2019 National Championship for West Florida on this team. He was one of the six. He's got 
experience in big games, making big plays. And Ferris State punts it away. West Florida down just a touchdown. Takes over with the ball at the 27. And just like that, Pete Shenick's team, who we thought might be down for the count early, down two touchdowns, has already made this a one-score game and a chance to tie it up now on this drive. Coming up at halftime, breaking down the college football playoff a little bit at the FBS level with all four teams set. And then we'll get you the first half highlights and stats here from Big Rapids, Michigan. West Florida has got to be feeling good about their situation right now, being that they have the football, they're coming off a big touchdown pass, and the defense is showing up. Now Jarrett zips it to the sideline. It's pulled in by Leggett. His first catch of the day, tumbling down to the 44. 17 yards on the first play of the drive. Yeah, you see the arm strength there of Pee Wee Jarrett. He, if you don't get any pressure on him and allow him to sit back and read, he has the arm strength. He's a, lay, he, he's a very accurate precision passer with good arm strength. And that was a good catch by one of our impact players, Leggett. Jarrett completed just one pass in the first three drives, and now the passing game has come to life the last couple. And Hargrove twisting down near midfield. They do such a good job balancing these running backs and rotating them in and out. Shamari Mason, Ravion Hargrove, C.J. Wilson. They don't allow anyone to get tired because they'll give them two or three carries. Boom, new guy comes in. Yeah, fresh legs. I mean, their offensive line is very physical and athletic. As you saw, the decor and stipe, those guys pulled from their, from their right guard and tackle position and created some extra blockers over there. And that's why they were able to pick up five and a half. Hargrove is a little bit bigger guy, 5'6", 180, a bit bigger than Shamari Mason. Now to the air with Darden again on the sideline, and he reels it in. This West Florida offense is clicking the last two drives. And that's what happens when you, when you start to run the football. Now, Fair State went to the one-on-one -on -one matchup, but look at the body control. The over-the-shoulder catch by David Durden, young man we talked about at the beginning, and now you see why with two big receptions. I love the ball placement by Jarrett, where only his man Durden could make the catch. No catches at all until last drive. Had a 58-yard touchdown. Now give him 30 more on that one. And West Florida is in the red zone with a chance to tie this game up. Jarrett, haven't seen him use the legs much, but he can. All the way down to the 10. He gets nine yards on first down. And that's what I was expecting to see from Jarrett. A little bit more to get this offense going. But given fair state a dose of their own medicine, McLeod there saved the touchdown. Jarrett, now he's in, a, he's in a rhythm, throwing and now running the football. Rudy Carlton, the offensive coordinator, said he can kill you in the run game and the pass game. We've seen both of those the last two plays. Hands it off to Wilson. Had to retreat a little bit, and he ended up losing a couple yards. Major Deadman rallies to the football along with Oladipo. And you'll, and you'll see the second effort there, though. But Wilson tried to make something out of nothing and squirmed out of there. And then you see all the deep ball running in there from behind. As you mentioned, Deadman cleaning up the pile. Third and two. Big play coming up. Need to get to the nine for a first down. Jarrett keeps. Got to the 10. He's a yard shy. What do you think? Do you take the points, or do you let this offense, who's been rolling the last couple drives, stay on the field to pick up a yard? I think you go for this. I, I, I think you go for it. I would actually challenge the spot there. I, I thought he fell a little bit forward, closer to the nine. But nevertheless, they spotted him where they did. But got some time to talk about it. I would even think about using a timeout, too. Final 90 seconds before halftime. Need a yard to pick up the first down and keep the drive alive. Fourth down. Jarrett following a block to the right side and a wide open hole for the touchdown. 
an extra point from tying the game. That was that was a call from the sideline there, though, by Rudy Carlton. And you'll see Fair State was blitz blitzing the house up the middle, but look how he sealed everyone off. And then Jared was able to find his way around that right side. And I think once they saw that earlier, remember they were on third and short and they got stuffed in the backfield, that's what you do as a coordinator is come back to the same scenario and you call it something different. It's called setting something else up, and that was a good play right there. Gave the deuces as well on the way to the end zone. And we are tied. About four minutes ago, it was 17-3. Ferris stayed up. West Florida has bounced back with a couple touchdown drives. And a minute 22 before halftime, we are deadlocked at 17. This is fun, isn't it? Oh, it's definitely fun. Just watch how they block, though. The right side, you're getting Wilson out front leading the block. But that was a good call from the sideline. They were able to invite all of the defenders in between the tackles, and they had a design quarterback run outside. But like we talked about last week, because you and I have been together for a few weeks now. And, and, Sorry and about that. <laughs> <laughs> coach Sinek likes it, but he knows this just like any other coach. There's always a guy that bring, uh, buys a ticket. But look, uh, look at that. 16 straight road wins in the past two years. These guys are what you call road warriors. 9-0 in the postseason. I mean, just remarkable numbers. You think home field advantage, you think being at home is good. Yeah, West Florida says, we don't care where we play, we're gonna beat you. Anybody, anywhere, anytime. But what I was saying is, when you do that, that means that a guy's traveling with you by the name of Uncle Mo, and I told you about <laughs> See, him. I, you introduced me to Uncle Mo last week. <laughs> he's at every playoff game, and he, he's not loyal to anyone, and Uncle Mo is short for Uncle Mo Momentum. And right now, he's standing right on the sideline of West Florida, reminding everyone that they've won 16 straight on the road, and, and no, they have no problem playing in this stadium. Yeah, they won in this stadium back in 2019, and this round, the semifinals, before eventually going on to win the national championship. Touchback. Ferris State has 122 to go 25 or 75 yards rather. Try to take a lead before halftime. Don't be surprised if you see Ferris State um, kind of go back to what they were trying to do. What, well, actually, what they had a lot of success with earlier in the in this first half, which was get back to running Carson Gulker. I mean, go, I mean Mitchell's in there, and they're probably going to try to get some points out of this last 82 seconds. Mitchell's the guy to throw it if they do go to the air on this drive. Instead, it's Taylor who got ripped down immediately. Quentin Peoples with a play at the line of scrimmage. Big fella, backup defensive end, 6'2", 260. Very athletic. That was a great play. A lot of penetration in the backfield. Ferris State not in any hurry whatsoever. They seem content going into halftime tie. Mitchell keeps. Spun down near the 30. We'll be talking to Ferris State head coach Tony Anise coming up at halftime, just about 20 seconds away. Probably not too pleased with a finish to this half after being up 17-3. Yeah, Coach Anise, we're going to talk to him. Looks like they're going to let this time run out. I think that's a good move by Ferris State. Now they don't try to go too quick. They know Uncle Moe's standing on the West Florida sideline. They want to get to the halftime locker room, make some adjustments, get going to the second half. Tied at 17. It's been a fun first half, though. Well, championship football. I mean, we're talking about the national semifinal, last two national champions, respectfully, you know, playing one another. And both of these teams have been here, and I think both teams were expecting uh, some type of competitive match, even regardless of what the score was. Look at the numbers for Pee Wee Jarrett. Didn't have to throw it much, but when he did, he made it count. 142 yards and a touchdown in the first half. Definitely. He didn't throw it often, but they just stayed close. And 
when you can make big passes, big completions, you don't need to have a lot of attempts. When you look at that scoreboard, but I think West Florida's going to try to establish the run a little bit. Jared showed that he could win with his legs, too. And Shamari Mason, first-team all-conference running back who has had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Nobody else has ever done that in a West Florida uniform. And the crazy thing about it is it's not like he gets a high volume of touches, Marcus. They've got three guys that they rotate in pretty evenly, but because he averages seven and a half yards a carry, gets up to 1,000 yards pretty quickly. Definitely, and they have a lot of lopsided wins, too. I mean, this, this team scores in bunches, but then they keep those running backs by committee, and they all have fresh legs. Another handoff. Mason sheds one and dips down to the 34. He's a yard shy of the marker. And so it brings up third down, an area that West Florida has struggled with greatly today. 0 of 4 on third down. This third down is a little more manageable for this offense. Those, those other third downs, I mean, they were behind the sticks. Yeah, so, you know, but that just proves that they're winning on first and second down so far. Well, they've won first and second down on this drive. And when you do that, now those third downs get a little more manageable. They barely saw any third downs on those two touchdown drives to end the second quarter as well. It's a lot of staying ahead of the sticks. Mason gets a third strike touch to start the drive, and he's got the first down. Justin Payout, the free safety, just saved the touchdown. Watch Mason get go outside there. Justin Payout, not very big, 5'7", 160 pounds. He's been the unsung hero of this defense, and to be able to tackle Mason in space right there. But a nice form tackle shows you exactly why he's out there on the field. That's number 11, Justin Payout. Good play. He's coming off a career-high 12 tackles last week in the quarterfinals win against Grand Valley State. A game that Ferris State won by three on the road. First pass attempt of this second half, and it's caught by Leggett for 10 yards. Didn't see a lot of him in that first half, probably because they didn't throw it much, but this guy is a great one-two punch with David Durden. Well, you'll see... Jarrett goes through his entire progression and understood where Leggett was going to be. And he made a couple of grabs, didn't have a splash first half, but he kept that defense on the while. Everybody is looking for Durden, but that offensive line did a fine job. I like how he caught the football with his hands. They'll move him all over the field. They think they can create a lot of mismatches with Leggett. C.J. Wilson stacked up right away by that Ferris State defense. a good play call, I think, at midfield because West Florida can score quick, but I, I think if they possess the ball a little bit more, move the chains, eat some clock, give their defense some rest because their defense didn't get a chance to get much of a rest in that first half, which is the first quarter at least, by them, and that's why Fair State was able to ground the power so much, but now you're in a second down situation where you don't have to force anything, but if you can get some decent yards at third down, it all becomes in your favor as well. Taken up three minutes so far. That is a long drive for them. Got it out to Durden again, who had two big catches in the first half. And again, like you mentioned just a little bit ago, that makes this third down manageable, just a yard to pick up. See, now you see the play calling changing for West Florida. This is what they do, especially when they're in when they're in rhythm. So that's Durden. He's in the slot. But Jarrett knew exactly where to throw the football, especially with the ball placement and the timing of that route. I mean, Deadman was right there at 18. That was a better throw than the defense could present. And now this offense is doing what they do best, move his chains in short yardage situations. Jarrett, first time we see him use his legs today, he needed a yard, and he's right at the sticks. Nick Thomas has had a really nice drive for Ferris State with a couple tackles. They get the first down, enough from Jarrett to move the chains. Jarrett has came into the game with more than 700 yards on the ground, and he scored that touchdown in the first half. I think with him adding to the running game, it'll open up some things for Hargrove, Mason, and Wilson. Then from there, Leggett, Jordan, and everyone else gets involved. That's what makes his offense very efficient. Jarrett to throw, has the man leg it deep downfield, and he overshoots him just a bit. Second down. Vincent Cooley on the coverage. 
So there it's all the middle of the field wide open. That's actually good coverage on, on that post route. You want to get on that upfield shoulder. And when the ball goes in the air, you play the receiver's arms, and that's great pass defense, especially down the field. Very tough route to defend. And St. Coley coming up a little bit shaken up at the end of that play. Their best one-on-one -on -one coverage guy who had three straight games with an interception earlier this year. And this is the first carry of this third quarter for Ravion Hargrove, so that means all three running backs have seen time on this drive for West Florida. And you see Cooley right there with that cast on his right arm. Yeah, playing with a cast is tough to do at any position, but especially defensive back. But he was able to get his arm in the throwing, throwing lane. Maybe that cast helped out a little bit. What, you got to use your hands as a defensive back? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> You know, but when you take a shot on first down and you're unsuccessful, which, which a lot of offenses do as soon as they cross the 50, kind of throw your rhythm off if, if you don't get much on second down as you'll be back in that third down situation as well. 12 minute formation offense. Five yard penalty, third down. Now this isn't going to help to cause any legal substitution for West Florida. So what was a third and nine becomes a third and 14 for Pete Shinnick's team. They're two for two on third down this drive, but it was third and one and third and one, not the same at all as third and 14. There's always a flip side to ball control because the longer you're out there, the more opportunity you give yourself to make a mistake. So that's why a lot of teams like to just score. So you have to, you know, it kind of works for and against you. Jarrett sprinting out to the right, zips it on the run, and he completes it across the 35. Larry Rembert makes the catch, his first of the day. Brings up fourth down with two yards to go. And that's what Jerry can do. He can get out of the pocket, make something happen. And at this point, it becomes a scramble drill. Rembert stayed in bounds, I assume, and, and got open. Now third and long is a lot different than fourth and three. And especially with the ball at the 34, you're going for this every time. Caleb Murphy, National Defensive Lineman of the Year at the Division II level. Can he and his lineman get a push on a fourth down play that's coming up after the timeout by West Time Florida? Up. West Florida, they're first. Early into this third quarter, West Florida trying to drive to take its first lead today. Fourth down coming up next. At this point, I think this offense feels like that with the score being 0-0, they can get back to what the game plan normally is, which is going down the field, mixing in a little bit of run here and there, but the passing game has been most effective in recent drives. Down 17-3 to with six and a half minutes to go before halftime. Back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives have tied it, and the Argos have a chance to come out here on the opening drive of the third quarter and take their first lead of the day here from... Top Taggart Stadium in Big Rapids, Michigan, the national semifinal game with the national title game coming up next week. It's a very West important Florida. fourth down going on right here. I mean, believe it or not, it's early, but if they if they convert and can continue this drive, I think it gives them a lot of momentum. Converted two third downs in this drive, looking for a fourth down conversion. And it's a little bit too long for Durden, incomplete. Turnover on downs, Ferris State's defense gets the stop they need. Zero coverage, which means six-man blitz, five covering five, no help in the middle of the field. Justin Payoff showed up with great coverage and dirty. Ferris State in a short yard situation. They're sending the house, and you'll see guys coming down the middle. Just overshot his man. I think Jerry could have held on that a little bit longer because no one was in his face. He would have gave Durden another two yards. He might have been able to complete that one. And that's what they're talking about right there. First third quarter drive for Ferris State now after the defense gets the stop on fourth down. Haven't seen Mitchell throw much at all today. And in fact, he takes off with the legs. Gets wrapped up at the 40. Got six yards before Will Breland, who is the star linebacker for West Florida, makes the stop. Good coverage down the field by West Florida. Malik Mitchell made a great decision, not forcing the ball down the field, made something happen with his legs. 
This offense ran for more than 200 yards in the first half. This is Libertas, his first catch across midfield. 11 yards and a first down. I like the call there, going tempo, finding Libertas on a spot route. Get the ball in and out quick. Let him catch, run, make something happen. Pick up a first down. Now back to the option with Taylor, who was so good in the first half, and now West Florida rallies to him defensively. Maybe a yard. Cody Lowe, number seven. Watch him get off a block and then lay out and make a textbook tackle in space on Taylor. And that's not easy to do, but when you do that, then that's going to definitely help your defense on first down, going into second down and second and long. Yeah, one on one open field tackle against Marcus Taylor. <laughs> not something many people accomplish very much. Cody Lowe did on that last play. Now a wide open hole for Taylor, exploding through the middle. Down to the 35, move the chains again. And you'll see Ferris State block extremely well. I mean, they washed, that, the left side of that line washed down the defensive line and opened up a running lane. And you have Jefferson going in that zoom motion. It really opens up a big run lane. Make it to Rose on the motion. Mitchell has a wide open guy on the sideline, and it's Taylor not just involved in the running game, but they get him involved a lot in the pass game, too. Yeah, he's a space player. He's not necessarily a running back or a slot. He's just a space player who runs good routes. They tried to get it to him earlier down in the end zone and stepped out of bounds, but he has great hands, 33 grabs coming into the game, very productive. He knows what to do with the ball when he gets it, and I think West Florida just lost sight of where he was in, in the route combination. It was 33 catches, third most on the team, and without Tyrese Hunt Thompson, who's suspended today, it's the second most. So not just the runner, but also want him to get touches in the pass game, and this is Zamir Knighton getting his first carry of the drive. Good downhill runner. He's only 5'10", 175, but that's the kind of guy Coach Evans wants in this offense. Guys who can catch in space and still get vertical in between the tackles. Got eight yards there. Make this second and two. Knight and again escaped from one momentarily, but still got taken down. Well, you need points regardless. I know you want to get seven here, Marcus, but the way that that first half ended where West Florida scored 14 unanswered, this offense has to get points one way or another. I think they need seven, but I think they'll take the three yeah. because you want to reward your offense and get something out of this drive. As you see, Carson Golker back in. Two rushing touchdowns today for the backup quarterback. Got a push and a second effort. He gets drugged back, but it's enough for a first down, and it's first and goal. That was that was their bread and butter in that first quarter. It's Gulker. This is what he does for this offense. He converts short yardage. He scores inside the goal line area. And this offensive line, they just rev up a little bit differently when they know he's getting ready to run that football. 6'3", 220 pounds, a force running the football from the quarterback spot. And that's an easy touchdown for Ferris State. It's Libertas in. Just a typical, simple jet sweep, but it hit awfully fast. And the ball got outside of the defense before the defensive line could even raise up and get any penetration. See how quick that play happened and you start getting blocks down the field on the perimeter and all you needed was a couple of yards. That's a good play call, especially with Gawker in at quarterback and everyone expecting him to run the ball up the middle. A needed touchdown for Ferris State. After giving up 14 in a row to end the second quarter, Bulldogs back on top. The extra point driven through by Eddie Jouette. 24-17, Des Libertas scores to put Ferris State back on top.
Ferris State opens up the third quarter with a nine-play, 66-yard touchdown drive, and they mixed in a little bit of run, a little bit of pass to get there to take the lead. Yeah, definitely a mixed bag of offensive play calling and some playmaking. They were able to throw the ball. You see Marcus Taylor right there on a the wheel route. Then they brought Gawker back in, let him run it, mixed in the Burtis. What they did was they allowed everybody to touch the football that drive. I think it kept the defense off balance. The defense got a stop on fourth down to get the football back early in the third quarter. Offense responded with a touchdown. And Ferris State, who led 17-3 earlier, reclaims the lead after 14 unanswered from West Florida. Yeah, they, they, they really got back to business offensively. I think running the football was the difference. Squib kick tight to the sideline, and it goes out. So great starting field position coming up for West Florida. Illegal kick out of bounds, kicking team. West Florida wants to put the ball in at the 35-yard line, first and 10. Media timeout. Well, West Florida gets it at the 35 to start after this, trying to respond after the Ferris State touchdown. Again, yeah, and West Florida didn't need any first downs, as many as they hit some big passes and they're trying to get back to it now. Jarrett gets swarmed, tried to escape from one, and he lost a couple yards. Haven't seen a ton of penetration from this Ferris State defensive line who has 55 sacks on the season, but getting to him here. Yeah, and you're going to see number eight, Oladipo, just get up the field, make some things happen. Nick Thomas as well with the linebacker, a delayed blitz. But that was a coverage sack. I, I thought Ferris State did a fine job on, on the back end, taking away the vertical throws. Second and long coming up. Jarrett shovels it off to Hargrove, just got the ball away. And Hargrove picks up maybe three yards, but that could have been back-to-back -back sacks. And instead, Hargrove able to make it a positive yardage play. Well, I think West Florida showed their hand on their last series throwing the football. So now, defensively, Ferris State's been a lot more aggressive trying to get to Pee Wee Jared, but that's a heads up play to be able to flip the ball. The hard throw turned something into nothing where they've been facing the third in a disaster. Just two of seven on third down today is West Florida, both of them coming on the last drive. Need nine yards here. Jarrett takes off, has the first down. That was a big play because Fair State had all kinds of pressure. The pocket had collapsed. Jared took off running. But right there, he gives the old one-two to Connor Near in the open field. The linebacker for Fair State wasn't able to make that play. But nevertheless, he was Jared doing it with his legs in a crucial situation. Needed nine yards. He got about nine and a half, enough to move the chains. Shamari Mason can't spin away. Connor near the linebacker with a tackle behind the line and a loss of four for West Florida. Connor near was able to make up for that last play where he missed the tackle right here. He got all types of penetration. And, that, and that's called shooting your gun and getting in the back, closing the back door, and just getting downhill as a linebacker. That's called a run through right there. And that stops all type of zone, outside zone run plays when a linebacker can find a crease and, and get downhill immediately. It's a good play. He had three tackles for loss last week in the quarterfinal win over Grand Valley State. Makes his first today. Make his second and long. Jarrett lost the football and Ferris State falls on it. Mama, there goes that man again. Caleb Murphy, the National Defensive Lineman of the Year with the strip. Travis Miracle, the recovery. Give him 
give him the sack fumble. And then he's got the turnover heavyweight championship belt. But you'll see coming from the right of your screen, he'll come from behind, he's going to knock the football out right there. That's a sack fumble. See, nowadays in college football, a lot of people don't hit the quarterback, but what you do, if you knock it out of his hands, that's considered a sack and a fumble. And, and, and that was just a heads-up play by the best defensive lineman in Division II football and one of the best in all of college football, period. But that's called a heads-up play. Uh-oh. Oh, Whoa, What? You're right. saying it's staying with West Florida? What happened? Yeah, please, let's look at this. Did you see anything there that would make this West Florida ball? Maybe I missed it. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the offense. What? The previous play is under further review. Oh, so it's definitely not a forward pass. They're just trying no. to figure out who recovered the football. Ball comes out. Now we need to find out who has the football. Oh, yeah, three black shirts right there. <laughs> I don't. I mean, yeah, there was nobody in a white uniform around the ball, was there? So easy fumble and easy recovery. I, yeah, I do not know what happens. Oh, I think that offensive lineman. Angoy comes sliding in and maybe disrupted it, but if anything, right there, that ball's recovered. Should be down by contact. If he can come through there and bust the ball out, <laughs> he might have got it back right there. Yeah, I no? think he wrestled it away. But oh wow! Got a great camera crew here today. They are all over the place, showing us the fumble, showing us the recovery. Yeah, and then see Angoy comes in. He takes the ball away right there. Takes it away, but he's down by contact, is he not? He was down. Yeah. He was clearly down. The play was over. First and 10, Ferry State at the 36-yard line. So just as we expected, that gets overturned, and the more than 5,000 fans here at Top Tiger Stadium excited about that call with their team getting the ball in plus territory. After the Caleb Murphy strip sack, the Travis Miracle fumble recovery. Bulldogs in business again. That's what all Americans do. They show up in situations where you least expect it, and they make game-changing impact plays. And look at the field position that Caleb Murphy and company just gave this offense. Starting at the plus 36 after the fumble recovery, and Taylor the shifty move all the way down to the 28 for eight yards. Talking a lot about Shamari Mason and Ravion Hargrove on the other side with their yards per carry, but Marcus Taylor is just dicing up this West Florida defense today. He is, too, and he's showing he can catch the ball. So he's a very much a part of the passing game, but when he gets at North and South going and with his shimmy shake one, two, you can forget about it. Now Jefferson off the swing pass. Got the first down. They want him getting as many touches as possible. Run game, pass game, it doesn't matter. Number five is going to get the ball up. Yeah, he's a playmaker, and Coach Amis told us that he's the most reliable guy on offense. And, when you make, and that doesn't mean you're going to stuff the stat sheet. It just means when, you, when we need it, you're going to deliver. Taylor again, open space in front of him, trying to hop away from Shannon Showers, the safety, but he got him by the ankles to make the stop. Man, that was a good tackle in space. Great play call by design there. But as you see, Taylor doing what he does, and Showers doesn't make that play. Taylor was going to hit his head on the goal post. Let's see if Ferris State gets the playoff before the clock runs out. They do. Taylor, flag comes in at the end, and Kelvin Johnson with a punishing hit near the 10. It is a first down for the time being, but we have to check on the marker. It's getting real physical at the point of the attack, though. I mean, this offensive line is getting back to what they do. Probably got a little too physical there, but they are they are creating some serious run lanes. Holding offense number 79. 10-yard penalty. Second down. The corner will be extended for one untimed down. So Bryce George gets called for the holding backs up. Ferris State 10 yards. And before we get to the end of the quarter, one more untimed play coming up for this Ferris State offense. 
if I'm fair State and, 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 I'm, and I'm looking at this, I try to get about six to seven yards, talk about the next play during the quarter change, and then really decide if you want seven or if you want three. Because if you go up two scores in the fourth quarter where your defense is playing so far, it gives you a big time game. We'll see what they do on second and 13 first to set up what could be a third down coming up to start the fourth quarter. They clock down to three. Get it off just in time. Libertas, they scored a touchdown on this play. Last drive, not so successful this time, just a yard. So a long third down coming up to start the fourth quarter for Ferris State. Bulldogs have a touchdown lead here at home, 15 minutes away from their second straight national championship game appearance. 154 of those rushing yards have come from Marcus Taylor, a new season high, and in a big moment. Free play here for Ferris State. Going to the end zone, it's pulled in! And just shy of the end zone, it's C.J. Jefferson! That's how you take advantage of a free play. That looked like a busted play from the start with the cadence and everything. This offensive line gave Offside. Mitchell plenty Defense, of time. Defense number zero. The penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. And that's what quarterbacks do is when they get a free play, take a shot down the field. And he found this guy, Jefferson. Get that ball down to the one-yard line. Free play it is. Inside the one, a chance to punch it in and make it a two-score lead. They got Golker, the quarterback. Looked like he got stopped short. And there are a couple flags that came in on the play, too. Getting a lot of movement up front on both sides of the ball. Looks like an offsides. So I don't know how much mo how much closer you can get than a half yard to the goal line, but half the distance to the goal for Ferris State's offense. Yeah, and they called that on Aiden Sweat, 45, the defensive end, on the offsides. You know, I'm a pretty good lip reader, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> First and goal from inside the one. Golker keeps, lunges. Third rushing touchdown today for the quarterback. Fair State getting right back to what gave them that two score lead, which was running the football, mixing it up on offense different formations and then when this guy gets down in there I mean this is what they do Gawker over the top gets the crowd involved with the patience and the way he sets it up with the with the little jump step great job of that line too extra point stays inside that upright to make it a 14 point lead for Ferris State 31-17, 14 unanswered for the Bulldogs on the 28th rushing touchdown of the year for Gulker. 30 seconds into the fourth quarter with the winner going to the national championship game next week. West Florida has shown the ability to score and score in bunches, scoring 14 in the final couple minutes of the second quarter. And a pretty short return from Daquan Bailey Brown. And this West Florida offense taking over at the 26. Down two scores. They've never lost on the road in the playoffs. 9 0 all time away from home in playoff football. In order to do that again, they're going to need quite the come from behind victory here in the fourth quarter. Well, they did it at the end of the second quarter, being down two scores. They were able to fight back and tie the football game up. This time, they're going to have to do it one more time if they're going to keep that streak alive. They did it last time they were here. 2019 scored 18 points in the fourth quarter to come back and win. And this is David Durden, the wide receiver. 
who's one of the best in the nation, only has three catches today, so they're trying to get him involved in the run game as well, and he's slow to get up. We'll take the injury timeout with them here early in the fourth quarter. West Florida down two touchdowns, trying to come from behind to keep the season alive. That man there, Caden Leggett, is going to be a primary target. Replay coming up. Jarrett heaving down, looking Leggett's way. And he got held on to, but there's no flag there. There is one back at the line of scrimmage for the offsides, but the staff wanting a pass interference downfield too. That's the thing to do is go vertical on a free play and see if you can get a cheap one off, and they almost converted on that. No call on the back end, but they will get the five. Thoughts on this? Should this have been a penalty as well? That's definitely yeah. inter some type of interference. It was catchable. He altered the receiver's ability. He just impeded his path. And so second and one now after the offsides penalty. So C.J. Wilson trying to stretch it outside. He got swarmed behind the line. Third down coming up. See that young man, Connor Near, has been coming on. The second half of this football game, making play after play and getting downhill, running through the line. That was a good job of them stringing this play to the perimeter, giving Justin Payout a, a chance coming from his free safety position to make another nice open field tackle. Chance to get a stop here on third down. West Florida has struggled on third downs all day. Jarrett holds on to it, trying to get an additional push. And I think he got it. He got stopped first, but because of a second effort, Jarrett got the first down. A little misdirection, trying to get the defense to flow out of the box. Right here, you'll see him and Jarrett show some patience, basically a naked. But with his size at 6'3", 245, he's a tough tackle, and he's going to, he, when he falls forward, there's a chance he can get that first down every time. Jared on first down, escapes the sack, now runs, and lowers the shoulder, taking himself out of bounds at the 45 for eight yards. And multiple flags back in the backfield. Good area to call a holding there, but the secondary there, Fair State, trying to take away Jared's vertical options and, and, and threats, making him beat them with his legs. So the holding backs him up. First and 20 coming up. Jarrett stepping up, ripped down again. Jordan Jones leading the charge for Ferris State, and this defense has come to life in the third and fourth quarters. That's where everyone else on the defensive line starts to make their hay. Caleb Murphy will do his thing. All the people will get up the field. The pocket will collapse, and here comes the big fella, Jordan Jones. That was a coverage sack as well, too, on the back end. They just... Played coverage, stayed deep, got behind the sticks, and there was nowhere for Jared to go with the football. As you saw the big fella hot dogging out there, Jordan Jones, with the nice nifty moves. One of four defensive linemen to make the all-conference team for Ferris State. Jarrett dumps it off. Hargrove sheds one, got pulled down near the 35 by Connor Near. And that was the only thing that was available was a check down throw to Hargrove, as you see. Jared just has nowhere to go with the football. You better get rid of it. He did there. 
you see Connor near him. He just runs to the football. But one thing you're going to see Six Black doing is running to the football. He's getting guys on the ground, too. Third and 13, a chance for Ferris State's defense to get off the field already with a two-touchdown lead. Jarrett needs 13 yards. Using the legs to try to get there. Needs the 47. He gets stopped at the 43 instead. I think this is a – I think you go for it. I mean – Do you? I, yeah. I, 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 Ten minutes, offense is kind of sputtering. Defense struggling, stopping the run. I think you get in your bag and you go for it. So they're gonna they're gonna punt the football here and play some defense and try to work some magic. But you're not gonna get very many opportunities to get that football back. But they're gonna I, I, they have to get a three and out here. Will they punt it though? Keep in mind the fake could be in play here too. And it is in play. Snap it to the big fellow who gets twisted down right away. They don't get the fourth down conversion on the fake punt. Ferris State takes over. Pete Shenick tried to draw up the fake punt to LaRon Cox running it. Couldn't get there, and Ferris State has the ball in plus territory. That was a good call, too. <laughs> the big fella trying to get through there, but... It just, the fair State was looking for it. And, and that's why I was saying, if you're going to go for it, just go for it. Yeah. Probably have a better high percentage chance, you know, with your athletes out there on the field. But the defense, they were in safe punt, and they were looking for a fake, and they got it. That was a good call by you. And I think if that's why I said, if you're going to go for it, go for it. I think Ferris State knew a fake was coming. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, that you were right. You probably should have went for it with 10 minutes to go down 14. They tried to be cute with it. This is Brady Rose, the wide receiver, exploding through a hole on the sideline inside the 20. You see a little jet sweep action. Rose, 5'8", 175. He fits, he fits the mold for this offense and guys that can play in space and run the jet sweep. You saw it right there. He almost popped it. Young fella. Red shirt freshman out of Muskegon. And if you're Ferris State, you're winding this clock down to like, what, five seconds every single time before snapping now? Oh, yeah. Jefferson again on the swing pass. Nice hesitation, and Showers got him by the ankles. Showers is a good off the field tackler, though. But that play there, that zone read with the bubble off of it, that's just a glorified triple option. When you get the ball in space, the guys like Jefferson, I mean, good things happen. I mean, they'll take six yards. That's a glorified tough sweep. Kept by Mitchell. Turning down inside the five for a first down. Well, another look back at what set up this great field position, the fake punt for West Florida that was unsuccessful. Yeah, they were looking for that the entire time, and it wasn't blocked very well. You know, the big fella, Ron Cox, he's a good athlete. But, he, but to get four or five yards out of that, defense kind of snuffed it out. I think West Florida could have had there's something in that bag that probably could have gave them a higher percentage chance to get a first down with their offense. And Ferris State wants to talk it over. Bulldogs take a timeout, and we'll take it with them. Just over eight to play. The Bulldogs up 14 in the red zone, trying to go to the national title game. Ferris State on the verge of a second straight national championship game appearance. Just over eight to play, already up two touchdowns, Marcus, and they are driving inside the red zone. And the numbers for Malik Mitchell, the passing numbers, they aren't going to jump out at you, right? It's been mostly run game for Ferris State today, but what he's been able to do managing drive after drive and leading this team to touchdown after touchdown has been impressive. Definitely, and he has a good understanding of this offense, where to go with the football, when to give it, when to read, and 
throw the bubble. So he's, you know, he's been able to keep his defense honest with his feet and his decision making. So Carson Golker is in there now, though the backup quarterback who's ran for three touchdowns today. He hands it off on the end of rounds. And great coverage from this West Florida defense led by Cody Lowe. Well, this defense is still fighting. I mean, obviously, that was a play that they scored on the touchdown earlier in, in this half on that jet sweep. This defense very fast, athletic. They were looking for it. Don't be surprised if Gulker keeps that one. That was just a heat check to see how the defense would play it. Back to Mitchell after Golker just got one play in there. It's Taylor high stepping into the end zone, and that might punch the ticket to the national title game. And once again, they, they just got back to what they do run the football inside, outside, offensive line, winning the battle of attrition. We haven't called Taylor's name that much this quarter so far, but as you see, when he gets that football and gets the foot in the ground and, and gets north and south, you just see white shirts on the ground and a three-score lead without your best receiver. Durden, he went out, offense out of sync, defense create turnovers, and the fans love it. The camera phones are out. They're going live, you know. Why not? A lot to be excited about and a lot to document if you're a Ferris State fan. 21-point lead, 160 yards on the ground for Marcus Taylor, and Ferris State is rolling. We are tied at 17 at halftime, 21 unanswered for Ferris State to take a 38-17 lead and right on the verge of a second straight appearance in the national title game. Quan Bailey Brown in the return, spinning away from one, reversing field. There is a flag that comes in late. Here goes Brown Bailey, and he takes himself out at the 45 on a great return. Will it hold up? Well, that's one way to try to get your offense going is to flip the field or try to get a score on special teams. We'll find out what the... Third, illegal block in the back, receiving team number 20. 10-yard penalty, first down, West Florida. Well, that hurts. Instead of what would have been starting field position at the plus 45, will be brought all the way back. Look right to the left of your screen. Yeah. You see the block in the back, and... Didn't need to do it either. Yeah, it, it, it really wasn't going to impact the return in, in any capacity, as you see. Devin Thomas getting off the ground there, the reserve linebacker. So plus 45 would have been the starting field position. Instead, it's all the way back at their own 11 losing 44 yards of field position on that block in the back. So Pee Wee Jarrett and this offense coming out down 21 with 7.21 to play. Season hanging in the balance. Winner going to the national championship game next week. And we won't get a play yet because of the flag. Big fella Jordan Jones. He jumped off sides and just took it onto the sideline. He knew. <laughs> you know what, Coach? I'm out of here. That's my fault. Ryan Hodges, the defensive coordinator, didn't even have to say anything. Offside, defense number two with contact. Five-yard penalty, first down. Well, hey, they get five of those yards back on the return. Pressure again. Heaves it deep downfield looking for Leggett. 
who nearly caught it. It's incomplete, but numerous flags come flying in. My goodness, the arm strength from Pee Wee Jarrett. I mean, we're talking, he, he delivered that five yard line all the way down to the other 35. And as a defensive Pass back. Pass interference, defense number zero. 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Yeah, you just can't have that kind of contact, but as a, as a defensive player and coach, and a former player and coach, I'll tell you, I would, you would much rather give up 15 yards versus 50. And they probably would have given up 50 because that was on the money. Yeah, he almost still caught the ball, too. I just leg it. Jarrett has a clean pocket, lofting it to the sideline, and it's incomplete for Howard. Well, what you're seeing now defensively from Fair State is they're rushing on three defensive linemen and they're dropping eight. Playing very, very deep soft zone coverage, taking away anything down the field, especially after that last penalty where we're in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. That's the whole thing, right? They're probably not wanting to give up the shot play, but if you want to dink and dunk for five, eight, ten yards at a time, they'll give you that. That's right. That's, that's the strategy on defense, as you see with another three-man front. Jarrett goes down again. Third sack for Ferris State. And it's led by Ian Hall, one of four guys in that defensive line who are all conference. Brian Hodges, the defensive coordinator, really was, he spoke highly of Ian Hall. When you can get a sack with just rushing three, I mean, that means those guys are pretty good up front. Three guys beat five, but they forced Jared to hold on to the football. And Ian Hall, I mean, he's not listed as a starter, but he plays a lot of football. He's nine tackles for loss, forced fumbles, five and a half sacks. So he's very productive and disruptive as well. Again, three guys getting pressure on Jarrett. Now skitters out of it with the feet and stutter steps out of bounds. There's just nowhere to go with the football here, and they're forcing Jarrett to scramble, and, and, and he, at the end of this play, didn't he? Look, 100%. I don't know what he did or how he tweaked something. A little bit hobbly there. Yeah, on the lower extremity side, but just couldn't get away from that defense. And so fourth down. Jared Time not out. able to put a West lot of Florida. weight on They're that second. right foot. Please reset the game clock to five minutes, 53 seconds. Five, five, three. Thank you. And ahead of the fourth down play, a timeout it is called by West Florida. They use their second, wanting to talk it over. Need five yards here on fourth down. But how about the day that Ferris State has had, and especially the second half, the effort that this defense put together, it's been phenomenal. Yeah, and what they did was they started off the third quarter giving up some yards. They bent, but they didn't break. And once they got that stop and the offense responded, went right back down with the touchdown, I think everything, the ball just got rolling. It was all downhill from there. But they played complementary football in all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. So Pee Wee Jarrett stays in the game. They're being shaken up a bit on that last play. And only needs four and a half, five yards to keep the season alive. One fourth down. Jarrett, a little bit short of the running back. Mason, incomplete. Ferris State takes over. Ferris State faithful in the cold. It's enjoying not cold the damn is normal. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're just enjoying it, man. I mean, there's a championship football team. It was a 12-round fight, if you will. It was a boxing match, a lot of chess being played, body blows being exchanged. And 
in this second half, West Florida just hasn't been able to sustain drives and turned the football over, had some penalties, so they shot themselves in the foot, but then Ferris State, they just made them pay and took advantage of it. Ferris State had to come from behind last week against Grand Valley to win in the quarterfinals, but the Bulldogs scored on the opening drive today and haven't looked back. They've led the whole game. And Golker, the backup quarterback who has three rushing touchdowns today, carrying the pile with him for a first down. That's how they started their old business, was riding the back of Carson Golker. And I think they won the battle of attrition up front, but now once you start getting Taylor and all these other guys, Jefferson involved, you get back to Gawker running the ball, milking the clock, and they're going to take their time. Just over five to go. Back-to-back -back trips to the national championship game, potentially coming up for Ferris State after winning it all last year. Gawker this time, defense knew what was coming. He gets stopped behind the line of scrimmage. So Ferris State, barring something crazy happening in these final five minutes, going back to the title game again where they'll take on either Colorado School of Mines or Shepard. That game kicks off at 3.30 right after our game ends. Little equipment deal there for Golker. You know, those visors, man, those, those, those things will come loose and they fog up. A lot of guys still like wearing them, but, you know, it stops you from getting poked in the eyes, too. So Mitchell has to come back in here. Rose spun away from one, but gets twisted down right after. So this is a look at the bracket. Ferris State. Less than five minutes away from going back to the national championship. Colorado School of Mines and Shepard coming up next on ESPN+. And the score probably doesn't indicate just how close this game was for the majority of the way, right? 21-point game, but it was tied at halftime. It was a seven-point game going in the fourth quarter. West Florida came to battle, but just kind of ran out of gas late. Yeah, they ran out of gas, and, and, and I think they weren't able to sustain some of the momentum that they – game coming out of that second quarter and halftime might might have worked against them a little bit. Well, it's been the Marcus Taylor day. He gets the additional push still on his feet. Marcus Taylor inside the 10. Is this guy real? I tell you, he's real good. I tell you that much. He, I mean, he is playing like a man possessed. Look at him getting through the line. He would think he was down. We're only talking about 175 pounds here. You know, he's a he's a you know he's a big player in a small package, and you saw it right there. But look at this offensive line. I mean, Bryce George and those guys are just roughhousing people. Marcus Taylor hadn't run for over 105 yards in a game this season. That last one took him over 180. But you see his vision there and the ability to jump cut and let blocks develop. Offside, defense, number 93. Half a distance to the goal, first down. I love the emotion you get from Marcus Taylor, too. And Antonio Nice, the head coach, said that guy is our guy. He's our leader emotionally. When he does something, guys follow him. Well, they're following him all the way to another national championship game appearance is what they're doing. I think we may need to have a conversation with him after this game, man, if things so. shake, out, you know, shape out the way that they're looking. But we may have to talk to him to find out exactly what's going on with this Marcus Taylor. He's had a day, and, 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 and I really think he sparked this offense. He was the most consistent player. Timeout. Ferris State, they're second. Ferris State calls the timeout right before the first and goal coming up. And how about the day that this Bulldogs team has had both on offense and defense, especially in the second half. Run and hit is the name of the game on defense. Try to eliminate 
and minimize explosives on defense and then maximize explosive plays on offense. There's an explosive play there. But this Taylor, he was all over the place. Come back, start giving the ball to everybody. Libertas got in on the action. And then there's your All-American, Caleb Murphy, making it happen and then get back to Carson Gawker. They just gave you a little dose of everything. And that right there, the defense showed you when they pinned their ears back on a fake punt. But this man here, watch the effort, the touchdown, watch the emotion as you spoke to earlier. He's been the leader all day, 180 yards on the ground. For Marcus Taylor. And the more than 5,000 that showed up today to Top Taggart Stadium are sensing another title game appearance coming up under Tony Anise. Gawker's back in there, and he got shut down right away. See Devin Thomas in there playing to the very last second linebacker there, number 11 for West Florida. But at this point, if you're Fair State, you just want to be smart, get out of the game, bleed the clock. You don't want any injuries. You got one more to, one more game to play, as you see. And, tight ends and offensive line, those guys really, to me, are the real heroes as a group because they really dominated when it mattered the most. We're in the trenches today. Volker again up the middle. Down to the five. They can put the finishing touches on what has been a dominant second half today. Tied at 17 at halftime, 21-0 second half in favor of Ferris State. So it, was a, it was a total team effort, too. I mean, the offense responded when the defense was struggling, and the defense responded when the offense sputtered and played off of one another, and they were able to galvanize that locker room in this team and came out in the second half with a, with a championship mentality and effort. Isn't that the mark of a great team? When one unit's not playing the best, the other one steps up and takes it to another level? Sure does. I mean, long, long time ago, Iowa had us down 21-7, to us as in Michigan, right in our house, 21-7 to at halftime. And we didn't have much to say, and Lloyd Carr basically just looked at Brian Greasy and said, you got us into this, you better get us out of it. And next thing you know, we won that game 28-24. to But while our offense really, you know, struggled, the defense tried to hold on and then vice versa in the second half. Tony Anise's team into the national championship game for a second straight year. Said this team exceeded his expectations. Lost six sixth-year offensive linemen. You come back with an offensive lineman group to get you right back to the national championship game. And he knew his defense was going to be good. And he made a few tweaks offensively. And here, here they are again. We'll have to get one snap from West Florida because that was fourth down. So turnover on downs. Need one snap from West Florida before this one goes official. But look at that. We hadn't seen him smile all day. There it is from Coach Anise. You can let loose now and have fun, Coach. You're going to the national title game again. Back-to-back -back appearances. And I'll tell you, there's... One of the advantages, too, that I think Fair State has gained by being so successful is Coach Anise told us that they've played about 22 more games more than the average team in, in Division II football because of their deep run in the playoffs. In the last four years. In the last four years. More games. Yep. And, and that gives you a, just a ton of game experience. I mean, that's almost two seasons worth for most teams, <laughs> right? <a> good point. <laughs> I mean, it's two more seasons worth of games and experience and guys getting reps and, and just learning the system and being in situational football and, it pay, and it's paying dividends. A oh, great season from West Florida too. Team went 12 and one, got to the semifinals for the third time in the last five years. And Mason's gonna rip off one more big run. Yep. Definitely tip your cap to West Florida. Their program is rolling. And, I mean, they have a championship that they can boast, and, and, and they made a great effort of trying to make another run. 
It ends today in the semifinals. Number one, Ferris State is back to the national title game again. The defending champs looking to make it back-to-back years of winning the national crown. 38-17, the final Ferris State wins it today over West Florida.